Imagine a wild forest predator whose bite once meant almost certain death, now standing at the center of a sterile laboratory, its venom turning into medicine. King Cobras, symbols of jungle, myth, and fear, are becoming living biofactories, feeding a global pipeline of anti-venom and high-value drugs. Every year, venomous snake bites kill up to 138,000 people worldwide. Yet from this danger, we extract one of the most powerful tools in modern tropical medicine. How did this animal travel from shadowy bamboo thickets to regulated breeding farms? From instinctive hunters to carefully monitored producers in white-coated facilities, what does it take to turn raw venom into standardized vials capable of pulling a farmer back from the edge of organ failure? Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss the next breakthroughs from Adam85 Farm. And only then step with us into the hidden journey from wild serpent to life-saving global supply chain. Behind the dramatic images of venom extraction, everything begins quietly with managed adults. In China's regulated research and conservation farms, keepers select healthy king cobra, parents with legal, documented origins, then settle them into wide enclosures that mimic forest edges. Each room is kept between 27 and 30 degrees Celsius with humidity held around 60 to 80 percent. Soft light and solid hiding spots so these apex predators can rest instead of striking. Every adult is treated like a living data file. Handlers record body weight, feeding response, shedding cycles, and even small changes in behavior while double locked doors, glass shields, hooks, and heavy gloves create a biosecurity bubble that protects both people and snakes. In one well-known Chinese snake village, breeders raise about 3 million snakes a year, and nationwide farming has expanded since the 1980s as demand for venom and modern medicines keeps growing. When breeding season arrives, the rhythm inside a King Cobra facility shifts into a slow, calculated grace. Female Cobras are gently separated from the main enclosures to reduce stress, giving them a quiet space to coil, nest, and lay. The moment a clutch appears, keepers move fast but calm. Every egg is lifted before mold. Predators or sudden temperature drops can threaten it. Those fragile shells are transferred into specialized incubators set between 27 and 31 degrees Celsius, with humidity held around 70 to 80% conditions designed to mimic the warmth of deep forest soil. Inside these machines, time becomes the crucial ingredient. For 60 to 80 days, each egg is watched like a miniature vault of genetic wealth, a future producer of venom that may one day become anti-venom or breakthrough medicine. Keepers record every shift in weight, moisture, and color, because even a slight imbalance can derail an entire generation. This gentle, almost meditative phase stands in striking contrast to the intensity of Venom Labs, yet without these quiet weeks of nurturing. The supply chain of life-saving science would collapse before it even begins. Once the eggs hatch, the tone shifts from incubation to kindergarten. 
Each newborn king cobra is moved into a small box lined with coconut fiber or paper. Humidity kept around 70 to 80 percent. With snug hideouts so a stressed baby snake can feel invisible and safe. Keepers watch for the first shed. Usually after about 5 to 10 days. A fragile, transparent skin that marks the moment its metabolism truly switches on. From there, growth settles into routine. Tiny feeders like pinky mice and small lizards give way to larger mice. Then chicks, sometimes other snakes to mirror wild behavior. Young cobras move into bigger enclosures as they stretch out, while staff log growth rate, shedding frequency, and daily activity. Between 18 and 36 months, a select group reaches the size and stability needed for research, ready to enter the controlled cycle of venom production. Keeping a king cobra healthy is a constant negotiation with its environment, and stability becomes the quiet backbone of venom production. Every enclosure is checked daily for temperature and humidity, making sure the room stays within that narrow band the species depends on. Keepers clean and disinfect at the end of each day, not out of routine, but because a single spike in bacteria or ammonia can derail months of careful growth. Even droppings in urine are inspected, tiny clues that reveal parasites long before symptoms show. twice a year, blood tests, microbiology screens, and parasite panels build a deeper medical picture. While every cobra's weight, feeding pattern, and shedding schedule are logged like entries in a living ledger. If an individual shows abnormal behavior even a slight hesitation before striking at food, it is isolated for treatment or removed from the venom cycle entirely. In facilities that may house hundreds of snakes, this steady rhythm of monitoring keeps stress low, immunity high, and the supply chain of research-grade venom flowing without interruption. Before a single drop of venom reaches a laboratory, there is a quiet choreography of movement and control. Transport only happens under strict research and conservation permits, with each king cobra secured in a specialized crate, air holes cut for steady breathing and three separate locks to prevent escape. Labels carry the animal's unique code, the purpose of transport, the farm of origin, and the receiving facility, while a trained handler stays with the shipment from start to finish. There are no side routes and no secret sales. Every mile is about getting a living asset safely from one controlled environment to another. Inside the Venom Room, that living asset becomes a bridge to medicine. Technicians secure the snake with hooks and padded restraints guiding its fangs into a rubber membrane on a glass vial. Venom flows down, then is filtered and frozen or freeze-dried. And each animal is milked only once every two to four weeks to avoid exhaustion. Later, the venom is diluted and injected in tiny doses into horses that build antibodies. Their blood is drawn, plasma separated, and those antibodies purified, sterilized, and bottled as antivenom. Other labs split the venom into proteins, enzymes, and peptides, hunting for future painkillers, blood thinners, and anti-cancer drugs. If this gentle transformation from wild toxin to life-saving therapy moves you, 
Keep walking with Adam85 Farm as we follow the healing side of these legendary fangs.